Testing. Okay. Hello, welcome. This is another episode of Transcendent CEO. My name is Andrea Albright, and I am so excited that you are here with us today. We are interviewing a rock star of a human being and a CEO. Before we welcome our very special guest, Guest. Let's bring the creator and founder of Transcendent CEO, Satyan Raja. Welcome, Satyan. Thanks, Andrea. Always great to be here. Welcome, Jason. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, your power and pizzazz light up the airwaves here. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad, glad to, glad to be here. So much fun. And the person I'm about to introduce is an amazing leader in business. He's also a true physical warrior. He has so much strength, so much presence, and he's also a loving and devoted husband. How can you be this amazing all-in-one package, Jason? So nice to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I think it's a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of training, a lot of mentorship. And, you know, I want to add not only an amazing husband and business leader, but also an amazing father. And I want to highlight that because many times us as business leaders, you know, we, we get spotlighted on what we've achieved in the world and not too many people get a chance to see the care and the love and the dedication we put in the, in the house world, you know, and Jason is a, I have to say a primary example of someone who lives the wisdom of the warrior sage in the world, but also make sure that the house, the castle of his home, his love, is his family is well loved and taken care of. And to me, that's the essence of true uh, power, which is true love of your family that goes outward. So thanks for being a demo of that, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Well, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers today, Jason? Who are you? What are you up to in the world? Sounds great. So. So I'm the CEO and founder of a company called FPG. So you go to fpg.com. Uh, we basically do three things. So uh, we will find the ultimate sales warrior for you from a recruiting perspective. Uh, then we use third-party assessments to make sure they're better than half the existing team. Uh, put them through a 90-day warrior selling onboarding program and then guarantee their success. Uh, we also have that warrior selling training program, which is currently listed as number one in the U.S. and number two in the world for uh, transforming the existing sales staff from more of that kind of relationship helper based approach to more of a leader and a warrior. And then number three is a sales management program uh, that teaches managers how to be the Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, and Pete Carroll of uh, sales coaching. So those are three things we do, and it's all around the vision of delivering the ultimate sales warrior. Absolutely amazing. And you mentioned that you have invested a lot in mentors and training in order to establish this level of success. Can you just share some of the things you've been through before you found Satyan and the Transcendent CEO movement? Sure. So, uh, so it, it all starts with kind of a philosophy that I have, and that is um, every year I try to find the area that I kind of what I, what I would say suck at the most. Um, and then I find the mentor that I believe is doing a much better job than I am in that area. And, um, you know, I kind of am all in and kind of invest with that, that person. And the reason why I'm, I'm so harsh with even the word of like, what's the area that I suck at the most is because, you know, I want to, um, I, I want to, to have objective reality around it. I think a lot of people, you know, when they look at, okay, you know, here's the top three areas I need to improve on. Well, no one really ever puts any effort towards things they need to like improve on or areas of opportunity. And so I want to be really clear on like, what's the biggest area that, you know, that I suck at the most and I need to kind of work towards that. So, so with that, I've been, I mean, I've hired in the past a guy named Michael O'Brien, who was all about improving cultures and, um, was really more my, my consultant coach that I had for a while. Uh, another person named Susan Stageman, who uh, was my NLP neuro linguistic programming master trainer that I was with for three years with her um, getting to this NLP level. Uh, another one I had was a guy named Steve Siebold, who was the author of, uh, of Mental Toughness, and he was my uh, million dollar speaking coach. So, like prior to him, for example, I was only making hundred thousand dollars a year as a keynote speaker. And in uh, 16 months, I was able to go from a hundred thousand dollar a year keynote speaker to over a million dollar keynote speaker 
uh, through his kind of transformational uh, program um, and became the, the youngest ever uh, National Speakers Association million dollar, you know, kind of chairman of the million dollar speaker group. Uh, but I'm always kind of doing that. So that's what led me to Satyan uh, last year was, um, was a retreat that we went to that I can go into details of that, but as far as why I went that direction. Yes, and I do want to get into all of that. I just think it's such an important point because Satyan, would you agree that many CEOs who are attracted to this level of conversation have already been investing in their personal development, in their businesses, and so they have already gone through different programs and structures. And why is that kind of a key element to go to the next level to be a transcendent CEO? Well, from what Jason has shared and many successful CEOs, business leaders have attained is they've been working on peak performance their whole life. And this is something I've been working on, you have been, Jason, and all the um, incredible CEOs that are in our circle. Now, peak performance has a particular, you start from here and you can really push your car, if it's a Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever, whatever car we have, we can only get so much output, no matter how well we tune it, we can tune it to its highest. So peak performance only goes so far. But in this day and age, I believe peak existence is the new paradigm that we're ushering here. What does our whole total existence feel like, look like? What is our joy, our depth of, of, of the experience of life now, not just future projecting it? So I believe that those who have come to our doorsteps here have been immersed in human potential to develop their capacity to be real strong producers as Jason said, to shore themselves up, find where the weaknesses are and strengthen. So by the time they've come here into this circle, they're already highly accomplished, well invested in personal human potential in mentorship like I have, like you have as well, because we know that that is the most valuable investment we can have on the planet is our mind, our heart, our consciousness. That is the thing that drives our businesses, drives our lives, drives our families. So by putting that attention, that care, that investment, in the self, I learned this from Think and Grow Rich when I was a teenager, reading how Napoleon Hill went around the world at the behest of one of his mentors to go find the top, the greats in their categories to learn from them. So this philosophy continues to this day, but we're at a place now where it's less about more output and more about peak existence, not just peak performance in our circle, because when we have that, we can actually magnify our gains in the outer world just far more profoundly with way less struggle taking the path of least resistance. Mm, such an amazing way of looking at it because it's almost like the peak performance, you have to keep chasing it and chasing it. So tell us, Jason, why did you decide to mentor with Satyan? Take us back to that moment. Sure. So. <clears throat> Uh, so Mary Marshall Forrest, my wife, and also the president of the company, um, we we um, were both big David Dieta uh, kind of fans. Uh, loved the concept of masculine and feminine energy, and um, and so we wanted to go to this kind of couples retreat. And uh, during that time, uh, Satyan was leading the the, the men's side, and um, Suzanne, his wife, was leading the the uh, woman's side. And I remember, you know, like it was yesterday, I went to, um, I went to Mary on one of the breaks and, uh, and said, I really want to get Satin to be my mentor. And I'm always kind of seeking out like, who's my next mentor. And I had, I had a kind of a gap of what that was. And so really just what I saw in Satin was just the, the kind of everyday embodiment of this kind of masculine energy that I think is so important um, and so lacking in today's world and how to have that kind of groundedness um, of what we're really looking for. And so, so that was really my, you know, my kind of intention of doing that. And then, um, and then after further, you know, having a conversation with Satin about it, you know, we decided to sign up for a, a 12 month, you know, program, both on the, uh, the CEO side, but then also on the accelerated evolution side uh, to learn the, you know, the same practices that he was doing, you know, for me to, Kind of unleash me and to get me into that kind of peak existence that you're talking about um you know i want to be able to learn how to you know help other people do the same thing 
Amazing. And we are going to talk about your relationship with your beautiful wife and how you made that decision together, which is so powerful. And so Satyan, will you speak to that? What, what Jason is saying about the power of being fully male embodied. Do you get that comment a lot? And what does that mean to you when you hear that? Well, you know, um, it was wonderful to meet Jason and Mary at the David Data event, who's one of my mentors for many, many years, my wife and I. We were very privileged to be able to co-teach and lead the morning sessions, whereas David was leading the evening, afternoon, and evening sessions. And, you know, part of our Warrior Sage philosophy is understanding the different dynamics between masculine consciousness and feminine consciousness, not male and female, because I truly believe, regardless of our sexual preference, of our sexuality, inside us, we have a whole spectrum of masculine and feminine energy. And as Jason was sharing, I agree that the true masculine, the true spiritual warrior within us, if you will, has been eroded, um, has been, if you will, um, atrophied from lack of role modeling from lack of practice and cultivation of warriorship with heart, with consciousness, with love for greater purpose, not warriorship, not toxic masculinity for the sake of harm or gain or oppression or just getting what you want. For me, there's a divine aspect of our masculine nature and that is pure freedom, pure consciousness. Um, it's the part in us that is already always ever present and free, if you will, our divine spiritual emptiness nature as some wisdom traditions call it. Now, we also have a juxtaposition to that, which is the feminine energetic within us, which is the life force, the light of existence, what love looks like. So when we have consciousness, the masculine, and light, together we have this existence coming into reality. Now that sounds esoteric, but pragmatically, when we understand these differences, we can be better husbands, we can be better wives with each other, we can create a dynamic, positive, electrifying tension in our sexual relationship, where we're thirsting and yearning and we're inspired to be with each other mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, in, in, in all ways. To be able to cultivate that energy is an art form, is a way of life. And I believe as business leaders, we need to put just as much electrifying energy in the world of our creations outside as we do electrifying, juicy, beautiful, heart-connected energy in our home relationships. That fire stokes everything we do in our world. If we're not taking care of the home fires, no matter how much success we have on the outside, we're not going to feel whole. We're going to feel empty. So for me, in essence, we have to cultivate the masculine true essence to our full capacity to become fully aligned and in our flow state, not just in our aggressive state, in our flow state. And we have to integrate our feminine nature within us so we can learn how to be with life, to flow, to enjoy the now present moment and the joys of family, community, as well as do our masculine creations in the world. Such an empowering message. And I hear you when you say that masculine energy has been some ways demoralized, you know, or put down or made to be wrong. And so when you find someone like yourself and Jason who fully embody this masculine energy, it is so empowering to everyone around you as well, not only yourself. So Jason, you took us to the first moment and the decision of mentoring with Satyan. Tell us about some of the results that you have had. It all started with a retreat, didn't it? It did. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a phenomenal experience. Uh, Mary and I had, um, uh, we wanted to, we actually had just gotten married. And so we wanted to kind of kick off our uh, relationship with this retreat. So we actually decided to not do a honeymoon instead. So instead we went to did this retreat with, uh, with Satyan and Suzanne and, um, and really just, you know, building the idea behind that was just how to build a kind of a stronger, you know, like foundation as far as our future, you know, our future together. And then the practices and exercises that we did, um, you know, did really around that. That's amazing. And the intention of creating that time and that space to go deep into your relationship, what were some of the benefits and the results that you saw from that? Um, I, I think, look, I think it's, I think it is, um, I think marriage is, our, marriage is already tough enough. Uh, but then when you add, uh, you add the component of two kind of alpha human beings being married to each other, 
which is really what Mary and I are. I think a lot of people don't, I think a lot of times an alpha doesn't usually marry an alpha. It's probably a safer bet, <laughs> uh, you know? And so, but Mary's an alpha and I'm an alpha. And so, you know, we, we uh, with kind of the, the philosophy though, you know, with great risk is also great reward, you know? And so, and so we, we knew we were signing up for this um, kind of alpha level relationship that has, you know, a, a big extreme and a big spectrum, um, you know, of opportunity. And so, you know, so, so what it really did is just kind of help us, you know, ground us and give us, um, you know, some very clear intentions as far as what we're wanting, you know, uh, for the relationship and from each other, um, which I think is really important and just giving us some, some, some amazing tools to, you know, communicate better and to, uh, at the same time to kind of release the, release the charges that, you know, hold us back. I mean, we, we both were Hoffman graduates as well. So Hoffman's another kind of amazing process that Satya knows about, uh, about removing your your kind of transference that you have with your relationships and your, your, um, you know, that your significant other relationships, but Satya just really kind of helped kind of take us deeper into building a stronger bond between the two of us. Oh, amazing. That's so powerful. And it's interesting about the alpha relationship because I'm sure people who are watching this video right now may be attracted to an alpha or wanting to make a work dynamic with the alpha. And so Satyan, can you speak to that? Because you also have an alpha wife that you have chosen for this mm -hmm. lifetime journey. And why do you think alphas are attracted to alphas and what's the benefit of that? And what are we attracted to? And then why is it so difficult for so many people? Well, first of all, alphas are go-getters and they have great visions and missions and they wish to create in the world in a big and powerful way. So, you know, Jason and Mary have that spark for each other because they have that spark for the world. They're masterful creators and they're great leaders. They, they to be able to train people to be sales warriors for other organizations to guarantee that, who must you be on the inside, right? So that's that combination, that confidence, that truth in themselves that they've cultivated. Now, when you cultivate that strength, that power, that reputation, that capacity over years, decades, Jason and Mary have been cultivating that. What happens is there's very few people who can meet the depth of your heart's calling. There's very few. But when you find them, it's like, bam, they're the one. And so we get attracted by our mutual resonance, our peership, the fact that we're humming together at that high level. And that is, I believe, one of the biggest blessings is to find someone that you can and to attract and connect and to bond with a partner who not only inspires you, but you can take each other deeper and further than you can go yourself. So in our Warrior Sage philosophy, we have three stages of relationship. The first stage is me, the old fashioned uh, stereotype, typical model of the man is the dominant, the woman is the submissive, as an example. The second stage evolution is everyone is equal, equal in balance, which is a more harmonious, more evolved form of relating. But then there's the third stage, and that's an ecstatic evolutionary relationship, which is what Jason and Mary have been initiated to in the work that we've been doing. How can you create a relationship that's ecstatic, that's evolutionary, that's spiritual, that evokes the best of you, that you can be there for each other in the tough times, you can light each other's shadow up, you can share the tough stuff, the beautiful stuff. You can go all the way to the heart of God, to the divine with your relationship. When you have that level of inspiration and aspiration, then what happens is we move beyond just us as a couple or as whatever your formation is. We're aiming for something that's bigger, that serves the whole. So I truly believe alphas that come together in relationship, especially business leaders, that when they can find the arc of polarity, if you're too, if you're, if you're pushing each other in alpha, you'll resist each other. You'll end up depolarizing your sexual attraction. So as two strong people, when you're in the bedroom, when you're in your intimacy, it's important to play the role of alpha and beta, to switch it up from being the one who's the ravisher, the ravishy, not get fixed in your roles. But outside of the intimacy realms, it's very valuable to be honorable and powerful and equal with each other. But in the intimacy, we're still equal. But you play the sing song of being ravished, being the ravisher. Having that play, it evokes a type of primordial power, uh, 
a primordial passion. And that, I believe, can fuel not only our relationships, but our big visions as well. So beautiful and it just makes so much sense you know it's like of course you don't want to compete with your partner but when you're an alpha that's just kind of all you know <laughs> and so finding that dance and that polarity as you described so beautifully well we cannot wait to have your beautiful powerful wife mary on a future interview for transcendent ceo and to go deeper into some of the results that you've experienced personally, professionally, in business, as a father, what else did you notice as a difference? Uh, there's a couple of things I think we should definitely explore. So one, um, one is just, is look, I, I think in life, there are the, the circumstances that we go through and then there's the kind of the meaning that we give it, right? So the circumstance we go through and the meaning we give it. And, and so, you know, just going through like in the past, you know, obviously the last, you know, in 2020, we had the whole COVID year happen and just all of the kind of chaos that goes through that. Um, but, you know, when, when uh, you know, the hundreds of thousands of businesses that are going through the a 2020 kind of year of uncertainty, you know, just to have uh, a mentor like Satyan to kind of ground you and help you kind of see the, see things differently and to really remove the charge you know, remove the charge. I mean, one of the things that, you know, that Satin always says is a warrior finds the advantage. And that's, that's really become kind of our kind of rallying cry that we, we also live by. So like, for example, when March happened, um, I immediately in two weeks got my team rallied together and we wrote a book called how to sell through the coronavirus. And so when everyone was, you know, kind of freaking out, we took it as an advantage. And that book became a bestseller that week on Amazon on how to sell through the coronavirus. <laughs> You know, so, so that's the idea of like the warrior finds the advantage. Um, so just having that, that kind of guidance, that perspective to, again, remove um, that emotional charge uh, that takes it from, you know, this is a horrible situation that is doing something to us to this is a situation that's doing something for us. I mean, I think that's the game changer. What an excellent point to make. And, you know, when we're playing these big games and business and life and personal growth, we're going to run into obstacles. And this global pandemic is an obstacle that no one really foresaw coming. And so what do you say to that, Satyan, about what Jason is saying is removing the charge and, and looking for the advantage? Why is that an attribute of a transcendent CEO? Jason nailed it right away. You see, whenever we're moving towards any goal, vision, or mission, if it's worthy enough, there will be an obstacle that arises. That's the nature of life. Not always everything comes to you in a red carpet. Sometimes it does. When that happens, we can accept it. We can enjoy it. We can celebrate that. But many times we have to work and, and sometimes we have to struggle. Now, the thing is with work and struggle and overwhelm and challenge, which many of us business leaders face daily, multiplied during crisis times, even exasperated. What happens is we build up internal charge as Jason was sharing. Charges, the emotions get bogged down, overwhelm, stress, struggle, lack of belief, fear, anxiety around money, paying the bills, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen next year? Investments going down. There's a thousand and one things that come to our table that come up from the fear dimension, come up from the core brain system of all the ways that we could fail and lose everything. It's natural within us, we're human, we're mammalian. So those energies come up and that is charge, what we call negative charge that holds you back from clear thinking, from clear decision-making. So in our circle, we have very potent ways to find and seek what is the internal charge that's contracting our success now, that's contracting our team's growth and expansion. So as warriors, we hunt for those charges. Oh, I got fear around money. I have fear around my relationship breaking up. I have fear that my teams aren't loyal. What are they doing? Well, I have fear of how will I keep my teams motivated and inspired? How will I pay them? The list goes on. Those are charges that bring up anxiety. In our work, we go deep into that charge and rather than work over it, which is what most business leaders do, they just push it down, drink it away, smoke it away, eat it away, sex it away. We don't do that. We face it with pristine awareness. 
with meditative absorption, with deep consciousness, with meditative practices, with internal guided practices of transformation. This is where the transcendence comes in. We don't just motor our way through. We transform that, if you will, lead as an alchemist into gold, into opportunity, into advantage. How we do that is we seek the charge. We go through a psycho spiritual methods of transforming it. That heaviness releases and lifts and turns into oneness, turns into pure energy for choice. Now, when we're in this flow state that happens after we've done this transformation of our charge, our mind is clear. We're able to receive wisdom from our own innermost. Our intuition is really sharp. Our mental capacities are very sharp and we're calm, grounded, centered. Therefore, we become a beacon for our teams. We become a beacon for our families. They listen to us. They trust us more because we're emanating groundness of, soul, of, of, of truth. We're in our truth. We're not in fear. And when we do this, the smallest words that we have make the biggest impact. So this is essential to transform struggle and overwhelm and stress into flow states. It's an essential part of becoming a transcendent CEO and living the path as we go on because obstacles will continue to happen. But as Jason said, do we make an advantage of it or do we collapse? It's all a choice. Well, the emergence of the new leader is coming forward during this global crisis that we could see as a shift or a crisis. And this is true leadership. You know, people who are in fear and survival are not able to step up and write a book in the middle of a COVID experience and crisis. And so this is the sign of true leadership emerging. And Jason, you did so amazing with that last point. I'm curious to know what else is there? Well, the second thing that I think is so important um, that I definitely would, I want Satya to talk more about is going back to these, these kind of three levels, um, the three levels that you were talking about as it relates to masculine and feminine, you know, where, where we took that internally, that was a huge kind of like awakening for us is, um, is how to build a best place to work culture. And so, so we, we at FPG have been a, a best place to work culture out of like 80,000 companies in Fort Worth, I don't know, five or six years in a row, plus an Inc. 5,000 fastest growing company uh, about five or six years in a row, which is really hard to do at the same time. It's hard to be a fast growing company and a best place to work. Normally, if you're a fast growing company, you're a horrible place to work. Or if you're a best place to work, you don't grow very fast. <laughs> so it's usually like the opposite, you know? So we are able to do both and be profitable, which is good. Um, and, and, um, and it was interesting because uh, I didn't realize what we were doing until I learned this kind of three levels from Satyan concept. And then when I was interviewed one time from the um, Fort Worth Inc. magazine that said, hey, how do you keep winning this best place to work thing? And I said, hey, let me tell you about the three levels, you know, of a relationship. And, you know, the first level of a culture is what I would call kind of a, a, a me, me culture. So the, the leader and the employee, so the employer and the employee have this me, me relationship where it's, you know, we're both kind of like sucking the life out of each other. And, you know, this is what I kind of need from you. And this is what you need from me. And it's kind of like a horse trading relationship, right? That's a me, me level one relationship. Then you've got a level two, which is a contractual relationship, you know, that look, I'm, I am hired, you know, you. I'm hiring you, like, for example, as a salesperson or a designer or an operations person, I'm hiring you uh, based upon the following contract. This is what I expect you to deliver. And in, in return, I'm going to pay you X or I'm going to compensate you in X, right? I'm going to give you this relationship. Um, so this is what I'll do for you. This is what you'll do for me. It's a very contractual type thing. Well, a level three is that we're like, we kind of transcend way above like the contract and we're both kind of co-creating together to create something kind of bigger than ourselves. And it was interesting because what really hit me is I said, the only way a person could even qualify for a best place to work is if they have a solid level two relationship with their employees. Because because in my company, we're, we're not a level three relationship. Like we're not, we're not I, I would not even say for a second we're there. We might have instances of that, but I would say we're a very solid contractual relationship. So people really, they know what's expected of them. They know, um, 
what's what they're going to get from FPG. So it's a very contractual. And then we have a lot of checks and balances to make that happen, um, which I think is a pretty cool thing. But by having that contractual foundation, then it kind of allows us to say, okay, now how do we transcend and go to that level three um, relationship, which is, so level one is me, me, level two is um, kind of me, you, and then level three, we call it as an us relationship. Fantastic. What a great description. And why is this such a new approach to business and culture, Satyan? I mean, it seems so obvious. Why isn't everyone doing this? <laughs> it's our egos. <laughs> when we're in the me state of being me, me, we have our own agendas. We're operating our own agendas and we're onto our own self. What I want is what I'm aiming to get and go for. And that me state of being, it's brought us to this point so far. And much of business is based on my gain. It doesn't matter if you win or not. And those days, in my opinion, are over, way over. We can continue those paradigms, but eventually there's no fulfillment in just a me state of being in relationship or in business relationships, no matter how small or how grand. The second stage, the we, as you know, Jason was talking about contractual, very clear contracts. This is essential, uh, you know, for all the good points that Jason shared, that the, the equanimity, the co-sharing, the mutual respect, really very, very important in the foundation. I believe that we are all, all of us, the world, the, the transcendent CEO, transcendent leadership movement is all about helping us move from that first stage of contracted ego into more care for each other. And then ultimately the grand we, the grand all. Now, how do we have such high, if you will, intentions? How can we live up to, can we make our organization that it serves a massive transformational purpose? Jason started cultivating that in his company. We have that in our organization, Warrior Sage. And our massive transformational purpose is for individuals and society and leadership is to ignite passion, to live freedom, and to embody love. And so each and every one of us, when we find, cultivate, create, craft, and then surrender to, dedicate ourselves weekly to, daily to, monthly to, a massive transformational vision and mission that takes us beyond our ego and helps us move towards something for the greater good. Wherever we are on that arc of greater good, let's keep going. Because the more we do, the more inner fulfillment we have, the more richness of spirit we have, the more love we have in our hearts. And paradoxically, the more abundance we have in our businesses all the way around. Who would have ever thought that expanding ourselves in this way would equal greater business? And it does. Guaranteed, we've seen it across the board with all our companies that we mentor year after year after year by moving towards this higher vision, the finances, the business grows with it by staying stuck in the old paradigms of gain first and second stage. Then we have diminishing returns in the outer world as well as diminishing returns in fulfillment. So let's go for that because it's the way we're all moving. If we join this energy, all of us, as business leaders, then we can create a truly profound world where even business becomes a form of enlightenment. Wow. And as a leader, taking this on and giving this opportunity to your coworkers, your team members, your employees, whatever you want to call them, you know, everybody has options today. And if they don't have that fulfillment within themselves, then it's only a matter of time before you lose them to competition. And so really it's the best long-term strategy to be a business that lasts because of all that we invest in our people. Well, this is going so deep. I'd love to get one more from you, if we can, Jason. What's another powerful result that you've had from this transcendent CEO experience? Um, I, I would say, <clears throat> uh, I would say just kind of clarity on the direction that we're taking the company. You know, um, so one of the works that we did with. Uh, with Satyan was kind of clarifying our uh, kind of purpose as our company and our differentiator. You know, uh, Jim Collins in the book, Good to Great, you know, he calls it your hedgehog concept, you know, so what are you passionate about? What can you make the most money doing? And uh, what can you be the best at? 
And, uh, and so through a lot of um, kind of uh, inward exercises that Satyan took us through, you know, we, we created this vision statement that we deliver the ultimate sales warrior uh, you know, through sales recruiting, sales training and sales management training. Uh, but just that, that, that conciseness. And it sounds, you know, it sounds so simple to say that, you know, Satyan helped us create a vision statement. Um, but, you know, for those who are listening, it's a lot harder to do than you really think um, because you have to really go inward to create something that, that uh, you know, people are going to want to want to rally around and people are going to be compelled around, you know? And I think that's, um, you know, I like the word compelled, like a compelling vision, which I think is important. So it's a vision that, that, um, that pulls people versus pushes people. Uh, that's clear, it's concise, everyone understands it and gets it. Um, and so, so I would say just that's a, that's a big benefit of, of, of helping us understand what, again, what we are all about and, and what we can move towards. Fantastic. The vision and a lot of CEOs watching this may say, well, I have my vision. I've created it. I've seen it since I was a child or for years or decades. And so what Jason is referring to is almost like another level of the vision. So can you speak to that, Satyan? Sure. I'll use the metaphor of Bruce Lee. You know, Bruce Lee, one of my um, sea guns in the martial art tradition that I'm in, Bruce Lee is one of the grandfathers of, of, of our Kung Fu system. He was famous for this one inch punch where with just one inch, he could have such an effect, knock a man down 10 feet, 20 feet away, right? What is that? Well, I believe that's the power of full alignment of your body, mind, and spirit. So that the moment of release, bam, it's the most powerful impact and creates the most reach and impact in the world. In the same way, many of our visions and missions are amorphous, complicated. They sound technical, boring, many of them. Some visions and missions, they just seem like a statement on a wall. They don't have a life force. They're not compelling as Jason was sharing. So in our work, what we do is with all our organizations, we like to feel what is the soul level of the organization's mission. As Jason said so beautifully, what is the most compelling aspect that moves us, that doesn't push us, but that moves us to want to move and create and galvanize and come together around this vision and mission. And so crafting these, there's a lot of artistry to boil it down from something complex, big and sort of flat and dead to getting right to the root of it so that we find the soul of the mission. When we find the soul of the mission and craft it, delivering sales warriors, as an example, um, creating a world that doesn't break down is another one with one of our organizations. Very short, precise, but impactful that everyone from the starting employee all the way to the CEO can understand and gather around and feel good about, feel evoked and compelled to serve that mission. So I believe it's very valuable. It's essential to have that recrafting, retooling, if you will, or more importantly, letting whatever we've had go and say, where are we now in this very powerful transformative time in business? What is our true vision and mission now as we stand? How can we craft and relate ourselves to the world where our teams, our suppliers, our customers are to go, yes, I wish to be compelled. I want to be compelled by the grandeur, by the nobility, by the depth and the heart of this mission and vision. It's, it's, it's a must nowadays because without that depth of vision and mission, our teams flutter away. They don't rally around, as Jason was saying, something powerful. So it's the rally, it's the power, it's the one-inch punch impact that we must create to bring the whole teams, our organizations forward in this day and age. Mm -hmm. It's like this magnetic force that brings not just anyone, but the right people together to move that vision forward. Well, Jason, you have shared so much gold today on this interview and for our viewer, if you could give one piece of advice for the person watching to become a transcendent CEO themselves, what would you say would be the one greatest takeaway, tip, or piece of advice that you could give? The first thing that's coming up right now, I would say, is 
is is is go inward to uh, kind of create more more outward, you know, um, meaning that you've got to you've got to do your you got to do the self work. You got to work on yourself, you know, and you've got to you've got to ask yourself, you know, what what's really holding you back from accomplishing your vision and what you're trying to move forward. You know, we we at FPG we we call them leashes, and there's four types of leashes: uh, self image which has to do with sense of worthiness and self-doubt, uh, then stories, which have to do with things external to us, like the economy and uh, different circumstances, uh, the president, uh, then, then fears that are holding us back, certain reluctances, and then last rules, and rules that for the most part are there to keep us safe, but we have these rules sometimes that uh, prevent us from taking action. And so, you know, I think it's step one to do the do the self work of figuring out what are those leashes that are holding us back, um, and then and then and then to, you know, you you have to have some sort of mentor, some sort of coach like Satyan that can uh, kind of guide you through the 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 hero's journey, you know, guide you through the path of here here's all those leashes you have to get through to in order to accomplish your your goal. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so beautifully said. Inward to go outward. And Satyan, what are your final thoughts and shares for Jason and our viewer today? Well, Jason, you know, I very much respect and admire the true warrior stage that you are. I've seen you grow tremendously in this last year. You have warrior coming out in spades. It's natural part of your disposition. I've seen your warrior strengthen, but I also want to really note that what I've seen is the sage the wisdom in you deepen in ways that are just beautiful and miraculous. Your wife has said to me, Jason is deeper now than I've ever known him. And that makes my heart happy. And so what I want to share is I believe that this archetype within us all, the warrior, the one that is noble, integral, that's based in truth and honesty and, and, you know, is willing to face fears and move through and achieve whatever they achieve the impossible. I believe we need to cultivate that with and open up to the sage within us, the, the heart of our own wisdom. As D Jason said, to go inward, to find what is our own truths? What is it within us that really wants to be lived? Not that we just want to create from our creative imagination, but what's wanting to emerge from our soul, our heart, our spirit, what's wanting to emerge with our relationship in the world. That I believe is the sage energy, listening to that silent voice within, combined with the warriorship outside makes such a powerful if you will knock out one two punch in this day and age and i invite everyone to find the warrior within them the spiritual the enlightened warrior, to find and relish and nurture the sage give yourself time to do the inner work so that whatever aims visions and missions they're coming from a congruence that serves all beings into their highest Wow. Well, Jason, thank you for being our special guest. You are a shining example of how a leader can be physically healthy, emotionally powerful, and also create great success in business and achievement, giving back to your team team, to your wife, to your family, and to everyone who partners with you. I know I speak from myself. I am so honored to know you. And thank you for being our guest today. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. It was great. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Transcendent CEO. If you are interested in learning how you can take your business to exponential levels while also getting this kind of deep personal satisfaction and joy, I hope that you will reach out, stay connected to us. And Satyan, once again, thank you for creating all of this for us. My greatest joy. Thank you once again, Andrea, Jason. Love to the family, okay? Thank you for watching and until next time, Here's to your transcendence.